Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and guests unveil astrology's ancient archetypes that continually build the collective experiences in our unconsciousness. Get ready to find your free will from your roots in the stars. Hello again, Talk Cosmos. Today is February 2nd, 2019, and it's the second talk of Aquarius. Aquarius being, and we hadn't really talked about it last week, we spoke more of Lilith and her relationship to Aquarius since she's transiting. However, tonight's subject really is Aquarius and Aronis, the humanitarian genius. And I might say that is, it's many, many things. And in part, it's that break of patterns. It's that sudden lightning flash of vision, often created by lightning as we think of it, and also that gives a downpour of great insight. It's a sudden vision. And either it's a creative energy that we've been welcoming such as the genius status that it holds, or it can be of a very traumatic, unexpected download because Aronis really wants us to be our authentic self. There's much to discuss, much I have thought about, but I think tonight we have the perfect guest, Eileen Grimes, who is an astrologer for 29 years and also hosts on KKNW, the 1150 KKNW here in Seattle or Bellevue. Rising, Jupiter Rising. Jupiter Rising, I love that. The Jupiter Rising show. She's also an author of Titanic Astrology and teaches a great astrology set and also mentors for the professional. So tonight, I know I have a great companion in order to really delve into the extraordinary realms of Aquarius. Hi, Eileen. Hello. How are you? Well, I am fine. (laughs) A lot of wonderful, well, it's been wonderful in Seattle. It's doing very well. We can actually see the sky because Iran is really nice tonight. Really nice. Yeah. I'm glad we don't live back east right now. No kidding. No, thank you. Yeah, and it is really amazing when it when you think about well, Uranus is in Taurus. That wasn't a subject I was immediately thinking of, but really how we deal with the sky at large mm-hmm. and our Earth is going to be really in our brew, our stew of life. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it's going to. Um, I think any minute now, it's going to grab a hold of the banks. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I'm waiting for that to happen. Well. It is amazing to think about the security. I know that with the, 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 it's uncertain is the thought of when it gets into any realm of Aquarius because of that sudden break. Mm -hmm. And really going back to the mythology of Prometheus, Mm -hmm. which really stole the fire Mm -hmm. from the gods. And it's quite an elaborate tale of many dimensions. Um, leading up to it, but essentially that was his his big crime. Right. And then he was punished severely. Mm-hmm. And I was reading, too, that, you know, being one of the titans, this is in Wikipedia, even, right. that for those out there that want to look up Prometheus, mm-hmm. and for you astrologers, of course, we're aware, but he, uh, okay, I just segued myself but back to the fact of the fire and and and, oh he was a titan and he was one of the only he was the only titan that wasn't in the war the Mm -hmm. 10-year war and thrown into tartalanus i think you know the the underground but the point was is that he still had to deal with zeus on on some terms with zeus because zeus came and pecked out in the form of an eagle Mm -hmm. his liver until he finally was um, rescued. I would imagine he would have had to do that. Yeah, there was a consequence. Yeah. And so the whole gist of this is my point being that the geniusness that we create isn't always expected. Like you were talking about. It's very true. You know, the, the it's sudden. It's really um, out of the blue. 
usually totally unexpected. I agree with that. Yeah. I have, I was thinking about this, like what would I talk about today? You know, talking about Uranus. And I happen to have Uranus stationing in my chart. So it, it's kind of a, it means something personal to me, you know, because it feels like my whole life has been lived in a Uranian cycle, you know, um, kind of coming up against, well, I'm not going to do that in my life. I'm not going to work for a regular person and have a regular boss. And whenever I did, I got into trouble, you know, uh, because I would somehow talk back to him. <laughs> a little individuality. <laughs> Just a wee bit. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, I have Venus and Aquarius. I have a North Node and Aquarius, too. So I'm really quite Uranian at heart. And um, Astrologers often are. Yeah, we I do. was thinking we about do. that. Somewhere it's hidden. Not yeah. even hidden. It's pretty outspoken. Yeah, it really is. And um, I was just thinking about what I would want to talk about. I I was thinking about this. I know this is completely unrelated to what you were saying. Fine. But we can jump. It breaks patterns. Go for it. (laughs) Okay. All right. So when when it was, and I don't remember what year it was, but it was, I was, one day I was in my office and I was looking at my chart and I was looking at the transits to it. Something about that day made me look at it. Yes, that can sure happen. Yes, yeah, something that just said, just look I do at that. it because there's something to see. And I looked at it and I said, okay, there's Venus. Okay, and then Mars is on Venus. Okay, Jupiter's scoring Venus. Saturn is opposing Venus. Mm. I went... And then something was on my Uranus, which rules my seventh house. And then my Venus is in my seventh house. And I said, okay, if if I were a betting man, <laughs> I would uh-huh. be betting. I would be meeting a man probably within Ooh. the next 24 hours. Oh. Because I had all of these transits hitting hitting my Venus. In the seventh house of partnerships. Seventh, yep. Yeah, and Venus of love That's and attraction. Right. And that was in the afternoon, about 520, about 8 o'clock. 30 that night he walked in <gasps> that's a legendary to, story to, yeah and he had five planets in aquarius oh basically my. i think it was some of the same planets i had transiting you know it was that classic it was classic i know i thought well what was the iranian moment but it was it's usually it's stuff we don't expect okay but you know this is the first time i ever did a transit before it actually happened yeah you know, to see what was happening. Well, it is an intuitive sign, too. Yeah. There is, there is because it is that leap, you know, beyond. That, yeah. that, so that was a... That it was so funny it. because I remember thinking, as I was sitting in the room with all these people, I was standing there staring at the front door, waiting for him to walk in. Wow. And when he walked in, I said, there he is. Oi. Yeah, oi is right. That really and, is and powerful. that was a really... That relationship almost burned every bridge I knew as far as relationships go. It, it was, didn't last or it did last? It lasted, but it felt like 20 years rather than two years. Because I have a Venus-Pluto oh. opposition, too. So it got the, the Pluto part. Too. Well, this is interesting because it gets back to the idea of our authentic self. There must have yes. been something very substantial about yes. that relationship yep. that that kicked you or put you back in place. It did. It Mm. did. Because I was very much aware the first several months that I, there was something odd about this. I was feeling uncomfortable about it and it wasn't being with him so much. It was uncomfortable with myself. Yes. That's where it's at. You know, and then I sort of eventually figured it out that what I was really learning about was to just be who I was. And it, I mean, it's that's it's far far simpler than you'd think, or it's not that simple to do that, because when we're in relationships, sometimes we are actually portraying ourselves as somebody different, so we can frame ourselves as really wonderful and terrific for that person. This is me, by the way, not anybody else. But let me tell you, there's a lot of women out there that still do this. Oh, sure. And they're framing themselves in a way that they make them look the most attractive. And that's what I was doing. And it just felt strange because um, in the end, I said, I'm not doing this. And there was the there's the rebellious thing. I'm not doing this anymore. And that's right. You know, Aronis is awakening. Mm -hmm. It goes along with that theme. And it's also where sometimes one doesn't know what they want, but they know they don't want that. You know, they want to break the whole system. So it really is very uh, uh, meaningful, you know, like just relating that, the purpose of it. Because it's true, we can, if, if we are seeking anything external, 
you know, to, to yeah. for our identity. Right. And I just listened to Jason Holly today earlier, uh-huh. who's an astrologer in Santa Fe and a, a psychologist, and uh, he was on university astrology university. Mm-hmm. I transpose things sometimes, and bringing up the because there is this axis always, which we mentioned, you know, between Aquarius and Le, um, and Leo. You know, yeah. the, the whole right the, the, the polarity. Spectrum. Yes, right. and so Leo being the sun, which is our identity, and really it bring brought home just the whole conversation, but the fact that we know that, but realizing that that authentic self that we want, that that insight that that happens, whether Mm -hmm. it's sudden or a process through a sudden relationship or experience rather, Mm -hmm. um, puts us back to that self of the Leo. Yeah. Who are we really? For sure. Not somebody, as you were saying, trying to please to attract on standards that were exterior from ourselves. And, you know, we don't always have, well, I'll reframe that thought. It, it, there aren't really role models mm-hmm. always for the unique and individual. Right, right. And particularly exactly. for our brand of it and yeah. what we need to do. Yeah. So it can be complex. It is. And it feels like the the, the more time that goes on, and, and I, you know, joined up on a, a online dating site, and, and I wrote on my profile, I said, you know, if you're going to ask me what I want out of a relationship and where I've been before, <laughs> I'm not answering that. I says, it takes too long to tell, you know, and I said, I'd rather, and this is kind of what I saw, said in the profile, I said, I would rather just have a conversation with you. Oh, yes. About a fun conversation, something where we're testing something else out instead of our track records, you know, we're going to be bringing in our senses oh, yeah. of humor, you know, talking about things we have in common. Like for me, if I find somebody that loves Boston Terriers, I'm going to gravitate toward them because I love those ah. dogs. I love them, you know, and and I'm fans of, I lived with them a couple, a couple years ago. I was living with, with a, a couple and they had two of them. Oh, amazing. They were, they were hysterically funny. And, you know, and that's where I really learned to love dogs was having them, you know, live you know, in proximity, and they were always upstairs with me on my bed, yeah. and I'd be taking a nap, and they'd be curled around me. Oh, I mean, they're just so sweet. But, I mean, it's amazing how we learn about love, you know, how we're taught about it. And it really is about, you know, really is about self-love in, in the long run, and just being, I mean, it's, you know, when we're saying, well, we really need to be who we are, you know, that's a Uranus statement. Okay. But, you know, something, you find out who you really are when you're, who you're not. Think that's about that. That's, oh, absolutely. And this is yeah. what I'm thinking, too. One's involved in, in a structure, let's say, of a job or, or for survival, these right. different other uh, uh, requirements of, of living. Yeah. And one finds that that just is antithesis to their nature. Yeah. But you bring up, let's see, I was thinking in your conversation that you just brought up, oh, several words, I wish I would have jotted them down here, <laughs> yeah, of um, a, a thought about the Iranian. Well, you know, yeah, it just brings up so much, it just, you know, because it happens to be my my north node, it happens to be where my Venus is, my Venus next to my north node, you know, and it's my seventh house, and my Uranus is stationary, all of those things sort of add up to... Um, a lot of stuff has the Iranian flavor written on it. Yes, you know? and, I do too, actually. Yeah, but, and I think I think in order for and you know we look at astrologers having a real strong Iranian component in their own charts. Of course, you do, you know, because where else? I guess it is like we're going to an astrologer to really learn who we are. All right, okay, that's what that's one thing, but to really pull it apart piece by piece. And and try on certain things. Okay, that's not me, but this is me over here. Okay, so it's a, it's kind of a level of ex, um, experimentation, which is another Uranian word, experiment. Okay, we're gonna try something on, and if it doesn't fit, we'll just you know say that's not us. So I, I mean, there's so many things in my head about this, and um, and also about the self liberation that takes place. It is if you're it's truly undefined by other people's oh. um, parameters. Yeah. And now I'm connecting with when this is me thinking, 
which is so true, is also with the idea of, um, I'm thinking of the fixed signs here, mm-hmm. because it is a fixed sign. Mm-hmm. And the fact that if we have these tremendous, um, well, these downloads can also be of trauma, you know, if we're not sure. ready for it, sure. meaning that, as Jason was saying, we dismember, we, we put that aside so that we can manage and mm-hmm. we can continue going ahead. Right. So really, in a safe environment, one can get in, t- and then too, if one has been restricted and unable or unaccepted or penalized and not beaten, able oh, to be yeah. them their yeah. self right. through a society or parental or, or ho- however it might go, then one isn't familiar with any of these or, or the the strength of it. So in other words, as one, as you were saying, one gets uh, acquainted or from or suddenly aware of what could this be me? Is this me? Is this me? Is yeah. it, that that does bring it back from mm-hmm. being d- dismembered or yeah. being um, so to, to integrate it? Yeah, I think so. And you know, the funny thing too, just thinking, you know, it's like. I have a Mercury Uranus square too, my chart, so I think this way. Um, I think that it's like anything else that we're trying on something new, like we try on a new garment or something. And we look in the mirror, is this who I am or is this who I'm not? Well, the idea is that you have to try it on, you know, and maybe act some of it out, which is mm-hmm. the opposite Leo. You have to act it out. Oh, yes. And, um, and sometimes... It's that, you know, when it becomes traumatic is when we are leaping from one paradigm to another paradigm because we're abandoning what we thought we were versus who we think we are. And um, that can be traumatic. Um, I was just talking to a guy, and, and it turns out this whole thing's not even true now. But, I mean, I talked to a guy that thought he was born a year later than he really was. Mm. He was under the impression his brother had told him that he was born in 1952. He always thought he was born in 51. So he wanted me to look at the chart, the difference between that time and this time, a year apart. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yes. just said, if this is true and you're born in 1952, you're going to have to have a full personality transplant, you know, because it was the difference between having a Cancer sun, a Pisces moon, and a moon in the 12th. A very all feeling soft and fuzzy to five planets in Leo. By Ooh, God. let's just you know? express our manifestation. And Aries <laughs> rising, too. You know, oh. like that would be just, you know, five planets plus fire. This rising sign, six items in fire. Oh, my. So, and he's just as about as laid back as they come. Mm. So I thought, I really hope that this is, is a mistake. Because I think he kind of wants to be something other than he is. So he, too, is dealing with the issues. And I shouldn't be. I hope he's not listening to the show while he might be. But anyway. Well, maybe uh, there's some insight he'll find. Yeah, I mean, I hope. If, if really and truthfully, if he really looked at the way he lived his life and, you know, it all pretty much suited the first chart being born in 1951, you know, and 52 would have been completely complete so completely out of out of sync with the way he had lived his life it would be like okay you'd have to you'd basically be a walk in <laughs> you know <laughs> to be able to accommodate it you know and i thought when he he messaged me today he says it's 51 i said oh thank god yeah. you know cuz i thought i was actually going to volunteer to help him with the regurgitation or reconstruction or retransformation of this person but i thought it couldn't be that drastic it couldn't be god doesn't make mistakes well going back to your <laughs> thought that who we are can be traumatic it's really if it breaks some really security or something that's very fixed like yeah. here in his mind and we don't know the i don't know the rest of his chart it's not necessary but the point is is that the, the it's not the event it's the experience yeah so that really does relate back to what trauma is for right. people here to realize it can be anything you can have the identical well a supposed identical event but distinctly different ex- e- uh, meaningfulness right for that experience and you know tradition I mean it can be anything from the the, the gravest of of war mm-hmm. or rape or whether or incest or 
or and something that basically changes the whole direction of your life. Well, something that totally shocks a part of us that we can't immediately integrate and we have to put yeah. aside yeah, we do. to figure out. Right. And so from this standpoint, and so that's an example. Yeah, but because the outer planets, they all deal with trauma in some kind. And I've always kind of, who was it that told me this? Andro Ali, I think. Hmm. He was talking about the three levels of trauma. Sudden is Uranus, Neptune is diffusive, and deep is Pluto. And um, and trauma is what? It is a shock to the soul, the whole system, that it it can send you backwards, but it, it basically you have to formulate, reformulate everything, you know, and... Um, and there's obviously there are a lot of traumas that we can't experience in life. But um, my feeling is, I'm not going to disagree with you, but I'm going to add my thoughts here. Oh, good. I think that Uranus is probably the most positive of all three of those because it seems to have this liberation take place at the end of it all. Yes. You know. Well, it is true. There is a purpose. It wants to get to authentic. Authentic That's self, authentic and so self. It, it it how we view it mm-hmm. is only in our judgment at that time right. that seems so dreadful. Mm-hmm. And I I'm I agree even with the worst case. I um, and there are terrible cases, you know, of of experiences mm-hmm. that people have these really they're shocked, they're frozen. You know, it takes yeah. many many years to have, because every time it triggers these. Uh, recounting that moment right. as if t- like lightning coming back and shining right. vision on it again, or not vision, but uh, sight on it. But right. the truth is, is that given enough time, it's uh, it can get absorbed. In fact, Jason was saying too that if you just say to yourself, "In time, I will be able to accept this or yeah. be able to understand it," that just saying that helps. Right. Right. So yes, no, I, it's not something that, um, I think recently I had a client who was going through a Uranian event and I said, you know, the thing about this is we can never really predict what's going to happen with this. It's the one transit that is so up in the air, it could, anything could happen. And I, you know, we always kind of expect the unexpected. Yeah, well, we do that with this planet, you know, and, um, I was talking to somebody about, their Uranus transit they were about to have. He says, well, can you tell me what's going to happen? And I said, no, I can't really do that. <laughs> he's, he's, you know, I said, it's just when you're in it, you're going to, the thing about I like about transits is if we know about them, number one, if we know that something's coming, that we're going to be having to, you know, it's going to peel the cover off of the top of it. It's something we're going to have to deal with. And it'll come to us in a certain way. You know, your aunt is going to come dropped out of the sky, bam, in your front yard. It's going to be there without any warning. And Neptune is going to float in on a barge and Pluto is going to hit below the ground. You know, and so each of those has a particular method in which it gets our attention. So um, I, I tell people, you just have to realize that anything that happens that's unexpected is going to be part of this this event. And what really helps them knowing is knowing that this is possibly going to happen, mm-hmm. the unexpected is going to happen, so that they can not not exactly, you know... Be shocked so, to the point. Yeah, shocked. And, and, and freeze. Yeah, yeah freeze. just rejecting you, the whole no, reality. Yeah, can't do that. So, but then if they realize, oh, this is the right, this is she was just telling me about this possibility of happening. So it will have a person reacting in a different way and probably handling it a little different, probably much better. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. And, yeah, it truly is uh, being guided towards... Uh, and besides, there must be other areas of their life that are that really have been incubating up to that point yeah. that wanted to be addressed oh, and yeah. people then aren't necessarily looking at it and from the exciting part of like you were bringing up which is really true i mean trauma is definitely a signature of aquarius and Uranus, but it is that genius it is that that sense of great capacity it's a scientific mm-hmm. enlightenment of, of of our world it does seem to be it does have science kind of mixed in with it and um it, it kind of takes its place on the internet which is an interesting place to have uranus rule but it's um it's something that uh it's okay 
this is what it is. You have lobes in your brain. You've got a lobe that's here, and you keep going to the end of the lobe, and you keep coming hitting the wall. This is something blocking you there. Okay. And all of a sudden, you have a Uranus transit, and all of a sudden, there's a big hole blown out of that lobe. And then all of a sudden, that lobe has three or more four forks on that, so that you can go down those places and, ex and experience the new consciousness that is attached to that lobe. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely. It is that... Um, the bush of evolution, you yeah. might say, and it is progressing, and that feeds back into Aquarius, which wants to elevate and wants to improve. Yeah, there is does. that constant really drive by the time we get to it. And for those people in the audience, well, we need to take a small break, but I'll finish my thought oh, okay. real quickly. It's, and it's, that it's, is, is that um, it, it does want to meet with well anyway we'll just leave it at that okay thank you we'll be right back while we take a break from this week's edition of talk cosmos let's take a look at this cycle's archetype we are currently in the yang period of aquarius ruled modernly by Uranus and Saturn in traditional astrology by the ancients. By leaving a cycle based on governing structures through both man-made and universal laws, Aquarius breaks established pattern, permitting the energy of freedom. Just as its ruling planet Uranus spins on its side and orbits backwards, as a fixed air sign represented by the water bearer pouring the spirit of cosmic energy, Aquarius seeks to find like-minded, intuitively aligned souls to connect in social groups for the elevation and improvement of all. Celebrate your star energy blessings. Schedule a natal astrology chart consultation with Talk Cosmos host, Sue Rose Minahan. You'll learn to better understand what personally fuels your soul's seed direction. Sue focuses on your questions to connect you into your unique heart's desire and your true soul path's birth essence, including a recording and a copy of your chart. Schedule by emailing info at talkcosmos.com. That's info at talkcosmos.com. This is Susie Kerr-Wright, astrologer and psychic medium, and you're listening to Talk Cosmos on Alternative Talk 1150 AM where we discuss the meaning of our roots in the stars. Hello, Eileen, and hello, everybody. This is Talk Cosmos, February 2nd with Eileen Grimes, host of Jupiter Rising. And your show starts at 11, I believe. 11 a.m. on Saturdays. Yeah, right. so it was earlier than today for those people yeah. that want to catch her show. She has a multitude of guests. And we're talking about Aquarius the genius, the humanitarian, you know, Aquarius and Uranus seek like-minded people and groups. I think that uh, access that it has mm -hmm. with Leo wants the creativity in a group oh, sure. in order to yeah. develop. And by the time, I think just prior to the break here, I was talking about by the time we get to uh, um, Uranus or Aquarius, it's our 11th house. So there's only 12 houses it's next to the last. It is. And by this time, we're in the group. Mm -hmm. We're strongly in the group, but it's where the self is in the group. Mm -hmm. That's the real dynamic there. And so there's so many groups when we consider that make such an enormous impact on life. In fact, if there's any tra well, going back to our theme about tra trauma, not to carry into it too much, but as an example, I know that, for instance, so often if there's a uh, like, for instance, this mother whose daughter was unfortunately shot in one of the schools that has happened and continues, brought in a bill, introduced a bill, I might say, to help schools detect and assist troubled youth. It was just on the news a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and ha hoping to notify parents if there was an extreme situation to lock up their guns. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, as she said, to improve procedures for protection of all. And really, that does get into the realms of Aquarius. There's yeah. so many groups. It does. You know, you've got a cause that yeah. you support. 
you know, something that's humanitarian in nature, which is the 11th house. I always look at the 10th house as obviously it's the career and it's your upward mobility. It's your it's your ability to master what you're doing in a professional way. But it reminds me, too, of somebody like Bill Gates. Bill Gates, who I believe has Aquarius rising in his chart. Oh. Yeah, I think he does. Okay. And so one time he made this statement with he and his wife. He said, you know, we've got all the money we ever need, but, you know, by the time we leave this planet, we want to give it all away. So they're becoming f- their philanthropist. Yes, you know. it, it's a yeah. big and, impetus. And so that's really the kind of the essential nugget of Uranus, Aquarius, 11th house, is that once you've reached a level of success, it's it's really incumbent upon you to start turning around and give back. This is really what it's about. And um, I think, and it's, it's, again, more concerned with a group of people rather than just a singular person, which would be Leo, the group of people, a people of like mind, like you mentioned. But, you know, finding finding a situation where everybody is under the in the same boat and they're from all walks of life, which is along the lines that Aquarius really, really likes, you know, is to have a diverse diversity. Yeah. So, and of course, I think in this country, don't we have Aquarius rising? No, or, it's the moon. The moon the is moon 27 Aquarius. degrees Aquarius. Uh, and so, and we have other planets it's too. It's, degree too. It's very strong. It's, when you consider how we're founded on the equality yeah. of each and 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 the struggles of course of what equality has meant and mm-hmm. continues to mean right it, exactly and groups binding together the whole mm-hmm. idea of the states mm-hmm. you know my state your state but we're all one mm-hmm. unit you know yeah. it's enormous it's interesting and i don't want to talk that much about what's going on right now but we're kind of we're divided the country's very divided polarized and yeah and um that's more saturn because it's, i'm not you you're not me okay so we're different all right and there's kind of a resentment there about that and i'm not saying it's any one person that's causing that problem it's just the way the consciousness is right now you know what I'm globally, saying? globally, oh, it, right. is. globally I mean. it is. Globally, it is. Yes, is that and it, so it seems as though there's, if if always, it's interesting. If we have Saturn, and of course the next planet out is Uranus, and Saturn was traditionally mm-hmm. as far as we could see, yeah. and then Uranus breaks that, yeah, you know that right. pattern, and it also has that absurd, wonderful way of orbiting on its side and backwards <laughs> so it's definitely it's typical that planet is just dying to make itself different yeah i love it beautiful you know, blue electric like blue on its side and you know <laughs> yeah it's weird yeah so um in other words but it, it, the iranian impulse has something to break up it if does. there wasn't that fix six yeah. fixity and oh, although yeah. Uh, Saturn is ruled by Capricorn, and a lot of, and it is in its own sign right now. It's a cardinal sign of action. The fixed uh, Aquarius is of fixed opinions, and it's it is most incredible because our South Node right now for the next eight, well, not quite eighteen months, maybe, but a good mm-hmm. year and a half, somewhere up there is is in Capricorn. Right. So we are breaking up, and yes. and. And Uranus keeps squaring the nodes. Oh, I know. And so this is doing something out there, you know. And we do, you're right, we have all these planets that are, is showing, it's like, how stuck can we get? (laughs) Yeah, I'll hang on to it more. (laughs) Yeah, you know, we're going to, we're all just going to kind of, you know, stand here together and and, and stagnate. But such good news, speaking back of Mm -hmm. new information, I just, I printed this out. It, in fact, it was January 29th, mm-hmm. very immediately, and it was Politico magazine, oh. the new language of climate change. <gasps> and the whole idea is recognizing that climate change is a cliche phrase mm-hmm. that immediately triggers resistance yeah. without even digging into the consciousness of what does that mean? Yeah. So instead, the thoughts leading scientists and a meteorologist are now have a new strategy. Okay. And what it is, is that they're taking the politics out of it, which oh, that's good. I'm hoping will 
morph over no. to other subjects here. Yeah. And instead, they're talking about what is happening. Yeah. Just so people can make up their own minds. And I started to think that's so wise because instead of being the authority telling other people, mm -hmm. which in a way is maybe how language first well, that's begins. Capricorn is political. Yes. So, yeah. That's true. So, and Uranus is basically stripping it away and seeing it just as it is. It, very good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, therefore, people can make up their own minds. Yeah. They can say, well, I don't like this and I don't like that. But they're without being told, right. oh, this is what it is. Yeah. Without really knowing what it is, but yeah. rather if it's defined. So. Okay. One more comment on the, on the government Good. here. Um, I don't. Yeah, I could talk about that all day. I could yeah. Really it's TV part of life. I, you know, it's kind of how what we're facing. But, it, you, you know, Mr. Trump has a Uranus sun conjunction. You would think. <laughs> that he would be, and he's kind of acting out a bit of Uranus because he's he's defying all of the rules that have been set up in the government. But I mean, there's he's doing it not for the benefit of everybody else. Not you know, it's not to benefit. It's to make him look good. You know, there's a different focus there. There's the egos involved with that, and they think that's the key too about Uranus. There's no ego involved with with Uranus. You know, I you just can't do that. It is curious about Uranus, and I was reading again because I, I love this program. You know, it gives me an assignment to right. really dig down and well, start gleaming. To. Yes, what happens, and the idea is, I think it was Jason again that brought this up. Jason Holly, Santa Fe astrologer, on Astrology University, was saying that we think of Uranus as the future going mm -hmm. ahead. But what happens sometimes is Uranus, as we had said earlier, says, no, not this, and looks away, wants mm -hmm. something else. And then sometimes it can look to the past. And I was, trying, I was thinking about this as I was coming yes. to the studio to meet you and have this um, talk that really it all depends on the individual, back to yes, the individual. They hold it. Yeah. Because they might, first of all, I was thinking with trauma, you know, that one does flash back, those little moments come r reminded to a person, perhaps something they had forgotten that maybe the time was alive that right. they could think better about it but still how again it can be quite saturnian really because yes. it's not going to the future oh. it's really solidifying and making it more rigid right so exactly. it gets to be this mix this wild mix it could be like breaking it up but not breaking it up for really for what improvement is debatable. Yeah, I mean, you have the Saturnian archetype and the Uranian. I mean, they're back to back. I mean, they're, because one's being what the other one isn't, you know. And Saturn wants everything in a certain structure and it wants to do it a certain way, the way it's been done in the past. So it's very much past oriented. And, you know, Uranus is kind of future oriented. But again, it's getting pulled in the past because what it has to do well, is it has, has to, to break that up in the past to help liberate the past. So you can move <laughs> it. Anyway, it's confusing, but, <laughs> you know, but um, it's a good point. It, it, it's like, which of, what are the planets orientation? Are they past, present and future? Which is something I've been looking at lately. And um, the outer planets are more specifically geared to those, that particular dilemma or that question, you know, and because Pluto is definitely the past because you've got all that junk that's stored way down in your boom, boom room for like. Wants to get rid of what's not giving life. Right. Get rid of the dead. The past stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, Saturn is also part of that too. That's our. The history. structure. Yeah. The to structure. build something to form. You know, and I have to, okay, definitely that. But Uranus is, is the reaction to the freedom from the known. There's the book, Freedom from the Known by Jeff Green, which is really good mm. on Uranus, you know. And so it's interesting when you start looking at the outer planets, your consciousness starts to cross in your brains, you know, because you're dealing with all these different levels of interpretation, the different levels of consciousness at the same time. And like where one, uh, how does this work again? Well, El so yeah, I love it. Uh, essentially it rings to me of what I've understood Aquarius Uranus to be is elevation. You detach you go yes. a bigger vision, yeah. and it's partly again of thinking. I and I love that imagery of, of, of lightning, yeah. because you, it flashes in the sky. Yeah. You can see everything, and it goes away. I think There's Rick Levine light, mentions light that a lot. Goes on over your head. yes, and suddenly you see yeah. things, and, and whether you like or not or something, but it connects in 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 
in, in the synopsis, you might say, of, yeah. of consciousness in such a way. I agree. It does. Yeah. So it, it, in some ways, it's, not, it's definitely not linear. It's not where you no. go from A to B. And I think in, if, like you were talking about how counseling people or counseling as far as just talking with people, letting people be aware that it isn't linear, that mm-hmm. that and and to trust a bit of their intuition, yeah. Because really, the next sign is going to be Pisces, where we have no control over the universe, and it is the yeah. entirety of things. Well, you get through all that crazy electrical stuff, and then you got to float for a while, and that's really hard to do when you're in Aquarius mode, you know. So it's, um, but it's like you're right. You you have all three of the outer planets representing things that are unseen. You know, the things that we can't really pinpoint in our bodies. We just don't know where they go. And it's okay if we accept it. It's okay because yeah. that's it's sort of like the higher self on its different levels is coming down to give us a little wall up on the head. This is what you're doing right now, and this is where you're going. Okay, got it. All right. Mm. So it, it does help us in our general movement through things, you know, and it, it propels us from behind. It's sort of like having the, you know, what is it, the steam steam thing coming out oh, the, of the back. Yes, yes, yeah. the steam engine on yeah, the right. riverboat right. going down the river. Or having a jet engine behind you that is propelling oh, yes. you in a certain direction. That's more like it. Yeah, so it's um, it's just interesting when you're trying to figure out which planet are you under right now. Well, Speaking of planets, boy, I think how many more minutes do there. we have? Well, I do. I keep clipping out articles, and somehow I have a lot of articles for Aquarius. Now, we can't talk, and we won't talk of them all, but uh, there's immediately, there's two different orbs I'm going to talk about so we can choose which one. Okay. <laughs> kind of split the diversion. One was back to fire. I was reading, there's a book called Catching Fire, How Cooking Made Us Human mm-hmm. by an anthropologist. I think his name is Rangham with a W. Rangham. R-I-N. I never heard of him before, but mm-hmm. it's W-R-A-N-G-H-A-M mm-hmm. in 2009. But what generally he was saying is that it changed our um, hypothesis that ancestors had fire mm-hmm. much earlier than we even suspected because sure. by, instead of 800,000, it could have been 2 million years ago. Wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they found uh, skeletons with in their teeth um, perhaps cooked barley. Oh, okay. Food. And so when you think of just that huge, enormous time, well then on the other spectrum, so I'll see how your brain thinks, there's this, there's always... With the scientists, different planets that are found to be orbiting Mm -hmm. the sun. And uh, is this mean more planets in our solar system? Yes, yes. And one that we can't even see that we're just detecting that's so big. Okay. So, wherever that leads us, but that's also part of the unknown. Yeah. I guess one is unknown factor about the past, how we developed, and the other is yet unknown factors of how we're connected with everything. Well, I think as each of the outer planets were discovered, something was going on in our history. Relevant to it. Well, that it pertained to that planet. Mm. I mean, like you're looking at the uh, Uranus when it was discovered in 1781. There was a, a revolution on, uh-huh. you know, somebody was trying to right. liberate themselves from the mother country. It may yeah. have been us with England. Age of Enlightenment, yeah. too. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, all of that. And then when Neptune was, you know, back in 1846, that's the beginning of the Transcendentalist movement, you know, right around in there. You know, people were getting more spiritual. And then Pluto, well, geez, you could write a whole book on that. Yeah, 1930. In 1930. Yeah, and that's when, you know, the the underground uh, things like the mafia were discovered. You know, the under underground, the seeming this, this, this substructure of certain societal things were really dark and mysterious. And, um, of course, we discovered nuclear power. And, you know, it's all really symbolical of, of the, the process of as we discovered a planet. So as we discover more planets, we can pretty much figure that something in our consciousness is going to break. Something we haven't discovered yet in ourselves. I, I agree. I like this. Yeah, it, it is. So from that standpoint, I suppose we aren't quite prepared yet to know how or what uh, no, some of these planets of, will be. Of, I think we're up against the wall, being pushed against the wall with everything that's going on in the world. and um, With this polarization, yeah. yes. Extreme. Yeah, and we're all feeling the stress of it, all of us. Well, are. I was, this 
brings up the point of how breaks really do shift things. With this last shutdown of the government, I was listening to the radio driving, and it brought up, I think it was on either 88, it was NPR, I mm-hmm. think, and it was saying that 50% of the TSA people were looking for new jobs. Mm-hmm. That was a huge increase. Not that they're necessarily going to get them. Mm-hmm. but And they were thinking whether this job really was for them to begin with, what they had. Right. So any break such as that example, and particularly with that group of people that I, as I would listen on television, I thought these people were so prepared. Mm -hmm. There'd be so many other groups of people that would have no savings at all. But most of these people had savings. It Mm -hmm. was a very Saturnian, um, structured, aligned, Mm -hmm. uh, realistic, capable thinking of the government. It wasn't just TSAs, but of the government at large. I sort of expanded that thought. But having this break totally was a, well, using that word maybe more lightly, trauma, but it it upset them, their their trust, you know, to mm-hmm. to think of, which is an interesting factor too to bring up is the cross, the cross, the, mm-hmm. the fixed cross, yeah, because Scorpio is right. I mean, Aquarius would be the first square, yeah, of that exchange in in yeah. in Scorpio that you're receiving. Um, your resources through somebody else right and they broke it right and that breaks the trust yeah it's really tough i mean because you know when we're having anything uranus involved and then we get the other fixed planets it's, it's not so easy to go through because mm-hmm. we're hanging on to stuff you know, like nope i'm not moving off this point yes, yes. if it's Taurus, if it's leo if it's you know scorpio or it's aquarius those are all points that just don't like to move that much no they're they are formed uh, for stability, yes, putting your feet foundation, in, foundation of of solidity and stability for them, and when the stability starts to get a little nuts, I think ground gets a little shaky under their feet, it's like a freak out time. Well, it is interesting too to think of because there is, as we know in astrology, the three um, modalities of there's the cardinal. Mm-hmm. And then there's the fixed, and then there's the mutable, meaning cardinal is the action. Mm-hmm. And then, and I'm saying this partly for the audience, fixed is just that where form occurs, such yeah. as we've been discussing. And then there's mut- mutability where it shifts and it reforms in order to get yeah. action yeah. again to yeah. form. And it goes on that yeah, four times. It's a cycle. It's a circle. But Aquarius cycle. is fixed, but it breaks things up. Yeah, it kind of it really is the. It's just completely different. Yep, you know, it stays out the side of all of the. Listen, if you ever form a preconceived idea about an Aquarius, they're going to go. I'm sorry, that's not it. <laughs> you know, and rightfully so, and rightfully probably so, because they want to be. You know, and this is what I sort of see what's happening with Trump. He nobody can predict what he's going to do. Nobody can, you know, and so. I think he's with the with the Uranus sun in the tenth house. You've got the Saturnian overlay, so he's got the choice between the Saturnian Uranian and Aquarian Uranian because there's two of those people. I've noticed that, like Ronald Reagan was a Saturnian Aquarian. Yes, and that's yeah. been brought up too. And of course, um, Mr. Trump has a lot of dynamics, but with that um, Gemini opposing his. Uh, Sag Moon, I think. Is yeah, it? yeah. Wanna, because I mean, what I'm getting at is that he seems to know both sides of the coin oh, in sure. a way. It any, is most any good uh, self-respecting full moon person will know that. I'm. A, I was born on a full moon, and I sort of you see the polarity points. The opposite. All, yeah. The, opposite, the awareness. See it. Yeah. But um, it is. You just don't know from day to day what side it's going to show up, or actually, you don't know what side of the bed he's going to get up off of because each side of the bed or twenty sides of bed has a particular thing that he does. And any day it could be one day it'll be something else. You just don't know. Perhaps now I'm thinking of in Seattle. This is a little different tangent, but it relates just generally because it's like, well, how do we find a resolution to all of this? Because it's again a very Iranian thing. It's like, hey, we can find a resolution there. 
there's a solution. Yeah, there's we a should be able progress. To do this. Well, thinking of Seattle, where we both live, we have this since the '50s a viaduct. Mm-hmm. that goes along the water that we love as Seattleites because it's an alternative to Highway 5 mm-hmm. that gets really congested. We're like an hourglass, and so it just can get, well, it's akin to L.A. and Honolulu yeah. and all these big cities. Really well, we big don't cities. have the viaduct anymore. No. And so, therefore, it's we're in that three-week period, and who knows after that just how this is going to evolve. 90,000 cars, where are they type yeah. thing. Well, we find out where they are. Well, we'll, well I happen to be days. down. Yeah. <laughs> I happen to be down at, um, doing a, an appointment at uh, Swedish at Cherry Hill, and I saw on the elevator this poster, and it was saying, "For it had a great line. It was like squeezed. It's a Seattle squeeze." I thought, "Oh, I hadn't Seattle heard that." Squeeze. Yeah, and what they were promoting was carpooling, and I thought, "Isn't that an interesting?" Yeah, very uh, progressive. But yes, to, to network. Yeah, network. and so networking because the whole culture could change in that hospital with yeah. people. Hopefully for the better. Hopefully yeah. they wouldn't hate the person they were with. Right. But it, and then again, it might tell them something about themselves. That's right. how it goes. But as a nation, with all these changing paradigms or whatever we might be yeah. occurring, we need to find a way to all coexist. We need to find like-minded people or yeah. so many groups to to co to collect, yeah. to share, and learn how to work with teams. Right. There's a real skill to yeah, that. Yeah, and that's actually happening, which is cool, you know. Um, it seems to me that Uranus is evolving, too. Aha! <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, go for it! <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, Uranus in Aries isn't what I would call highly, you know, evolved. Is kind of fight your way through it. But well, Taurus lead is, word, ho. <laughs> yeah. Like, ho, we're bound. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Anyway, but Taurus is a little bit softer. It's gentler and it's fixed and it's slow and it's methodical. Sensual. Yeah, it's yeah, sensual. It's all those things. And Uranus, of course, isn't that, but it's learning how to temper its, its, its energy down to something that is a little bit more comfortable for itself. You know, and I think... I think if we can just kind of stay in the position of mm. of not panic, getting panic stricken. Oh yes, you know it's so easy to catch that button. Yeah, and because the panic is fight very flight, real, which you know? actually fight flight when I think about it or freeze has yeah. been added is very adrenaline Mars Aries. Oh yeah, and to remind people, Aries Mar oh, boy here's... Mars and Uranus have been marching together for a yes, bit. and Uranus has been in. Aronis has been an Air, a Aries. Mar, Aries. Yeah, at the end of Aries. <laughs> yes, for seven years. So yeah. what you're speaking of is and then of course a new climate. Like Mars is scoring Pluto right now, too. So let's just add insult to injury. But it's... Um, Maybe we need that, ele- we, that you know, dynamic push. It means push. we step back and we look deeper. That's what we do. And yeah, light our own fires inside. Yeah, yeah, because Maybe. that's the only place where we really can do it safely. Yes, the power's within. Yeah, the power's within. We can't do it with anybody else. And there may be something inside that really just is dormant that yeah. we haven't, we could we have shelved nicely, yeah. but really the dust is collected. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm the first thing that happened when Uranus was going to go into Taurus, um, I was looking at, there's a friend of mine who has this thing going on with revaluation of money that's going to be ending up changing the whole monetary system on the planet, which seems kind of, and she's waiting for this to happen. There's quite a few like that. Yeah, and I thought, well, I don't know. <laughs> and, I, and I really shouldn't put her down, but, you know, but under the Uranus through Taurus transit, the likely of that is more likely to happen then than it would be any other time. There have been quite a few talks about quite a few people. I want to make a brief announcement i'm just noticing the clock that next week we continue with aquarius at talk cosmos and we have a canadian astrologer a leslie francis Yay. who are yes and She's she wonderful she is indeed a great sense of humor and wit an extraordinary astrologer writes for llewellyn calendar so it'll be a great treat and meanwhile if you want to find out about eileen Grimes for tonight with Talk Cosmos. Of course, Eileen does host Jupiter Rising, but she's also on Talk Cosmos. Her bio and any information that you want to find out about her be linking directly to her sites, and you can listen to our archive too. So we have about a minute here, and 
I'm going to finish up this Uranus business. Good. <laughs> yes. It, well, think about poor old Uranus flopping around on its side out there <laughs> orbiting Spinning. around the sun. And then you look at it and its rings go vertical rather than horizontal. And it's kind of diametrically the opposite of Saturn. So it's interesting that it takes on some of the same characteristics of Saturn, but it's doing its own thing with it. Definitely the yeah. opposite. So, I mean, uh, I find it interesting. And, and then, of course, when we discovered Pluto, we finally saw Pluto. And there's a big heart on the on Oh, the front. I love it. I laughed so hard. I thought, how ironic. I mean, talk about, well, God has a sense of humor. You know, because Pluto is the last planet that ever would be talking about the heart. Except, again, it goes back to what purpose. And the purpose is really for our authentic, good, best self. Mm -hmm. Like tough love, maybe, in yeah, a way. Yeah, tough love. That but would be true. truly speaking, I think there's, we'll bind together. We have about eight seconds. So we'll yeah. bind together in bind together. our marvelous groups. That's right. Thank you very much for having me on. Thank you, Eileen. You're welcome. I've loved it. Thank you for listening to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and guests unveil astrology's ancient archetypes that continually build the collective experiences in our unconsciousness. Be sure to tune in next Saturday at 6 p.m. to continue finding your roots in the stars.